Hey folks, tonight we're going to be taking a look at an indie game called Pizza Titan Ultra. It was donated to me by my good friend Eviscerator Mark II. I appreciate the donation, man. Indie gaming, as we all are already aware, has been evolving and it continues to evolve to this day. Sometimes we get some really awesome titles that just completely outshine AAA games like Hello Neighbor, or Five Nights at Freddy's, Minecraft, whatever. But... Unfortunately, a lot of indie games just kind of go unnoticed. Some people really like these things, but me, not so much. I'll play an indie game only if I hear good things about it. But anyway, like I said, I was donated Pizza Titan Ultra, so I'm here to see if this game is actually something that could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Five Nights at Freddy's or Freedom Planet or Undertale. Let's find out. Two hours later. Good attempt. But no. You're here for a game review, and honest bigums will tell you the truth. You're here for the inside scoop, and honest bigums will tell you. Pizza Titan Ultra Pizza for Justice World right now. It's delicious. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Honest Opinion. As previously stated, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new indie game called Pizza Titan Ultra. It's a very odd, but very interesting specimen to say the least. So why don't we just go ahead and get down to business. Is this game any good? And is it something I could recommend to you? Let's find out. Pizza Titan Ultra is a third-person platforming game with an emphasis on speed and destruction. It was developed by a small group of people who call themselves Breakfall, and was released on Steam back in April of this year. Hey, I get to knock out a new release and an indie game in one shot. If anyone knows me or has been following this channel for a while, then you should already be aware that I'm not very big on indie games. When I play one, it's generally through good word of mouth, but this is a special case. I didn't know what to make of the game when I first heard the title. I watched the trailer and then I played the game. I'll go into details as the review goes on, but let's just say there's stuff that I liked and stuff that I didn't like. I was able to contact the developers on Twitter about how the game was inspired and they replied with, Pizza Titan Ultra started as a game about modular satellite maintenance. It had some humor, but not enough. We decided we wanted to pivot to a concept the team would find more appealing. The team was split between going full mecha and doing something awesome, full of lasers and rockets, and something grounded in reality, like Crazy Taxi or Paperboy. After much debate, we decided to do both. In the early concept sketch phase, our designer Jan drew a giant hand punching the pizza into an apartment and we fell in love. End quote. According to the developers, it took about two years to finish the project. The story of Pizza Titan, without spoilers, goes like this. In the year 2096, the world worships a pizzeria called Ultra Pizza, a successful franchise that delivers pizza using a mech that stands 10 stories tall. This mech allows for speedy deliveries of pizza that people are just addicted to. It doesn't say that, but let's be real, that's what's happening here. Throughout the plot, you'll be delivering pizzas while performing tasks for characters that nods to old TV shows you might be familiar with. There's a villain involved here known as Cheeseborg. This guy is seeking revenge on Ultra Pizza since they stopped him from destroying the world. Because Ultra Pizza accomplished this, they are now renowned heroes. Actually, that might explain everyone's addiction to the pizza. Anyway, the story is... it's dumb, but I'm almost positive that that's what they were going for. Unlike games like Hell Yeah, the forced humor was actually pretty charming for me. Like seeing characters that are meant to represent characters from TV shows in the 90s, such as Vagoku. I thought that was funny. Humor like this is something that I can really appreciate. The story is full of cheesy humor that makes fun of the source that inspired it, and I can't get enough of it. Even though the entire premise of the story is dumb, I found it to be enjoyable, but nothing groundbreaking. It has a beginning, it has a middle, and an end. No stones left unturned, all loose ends tied up, and there's even a plot twist that you won't see coming. To me, that is attention to detail, and it earns a gold star from me. Not a smiley face, though. You gotta be a good noodle for that. I'm a good noodle! I'm a good noodle! So with my thoughts on the story aside, let's talk about the gameplay. Short and to the point, it's... Okay, it's interesting, but it's monotonous. Monotony can be a good thing if done correctly, and in my opinion, this game doesn't do it correctly. To give an example of repetitive gameplay done right, take a look at Breath of the Wild. In the end, you're doing the same stuff over and over again, but it's for a purpose. 
Now I know that isn't a very fair comparison since that's a AAA game, so let's go and take a look at another indie game. Like how about Undertale? Same concept. You're doing the same stuff over and over, but again, it's for a purpose that's worth going through the trouble. In Pizza Titan, you're doing the same stuff, but there's really no purpose other than plot advancement. You see what I mean? You assume control of yourself piloting a giant pizza mech and the goal of each stage varies. Some stages you'll need to destroy certain enemies, play certain mini games, deliver a certain amount of pizzas, or destroy as many things as possible. So I can definitely see the inspiration from Paperboy and Crazy Taxi. Each stage has a time limit that can be increased by delivering pizza or by picking up these clock things scattered throughout the levels. While playing through the stages, you'll have to complete your objective and collect as much money as possible. You collect money by delivering pizzas or picking up these little dollar signs in the level. And you know what's funny? You make like $200 or more per pizza. Can you imagine if pizza costs that much in real life? Anyway. Your mech has the ability to punch, kick, and jump, and it'll have a special ability that I'll get to in a moment. How successful you are in each stage will depend on how well you can manage your time and how well you know the layout of the map. There's hidden ingredients scattered throughout each chapter that you can nab for bonus money, and that's it. What kills me about these is that they're always in the same location. I think if it was randomized it'd be a little bit more interesting, but that's just me. Collecting these really serve no purpose other than giving you more money. You use the money to either advance the plot or unlock new cosmetics for your mech. Notice that word there, cosmetics. The gear that you unlock for your mech is purely there for eye candy. There's a lot of them, so I'll give it this, the game has variety. My main complaint though is that the gear is cosmetic and nothing more. I feel like each piece of gear should enhance your mech in some type of way, like maybe run faster, jump higher, better defense, you know, stuff like that. And considering that all the unlockable gear is already available for you to purchase, it doesn't really entice me to want to play the game further if I already have the gear that I want. When you purchase new gear, you'll see a meter on your screen increase. This allows you to unlock special abilities for your mech. By default, you start out with the ability to sprint, which can actually really help you out in a tight spot. The other ones grant you a shield, a laser, and a gravity thing. I didn't unlock that one. So there is incentive for you to collect more money, but I'm pretty sure you cannot unlock everything in your first playthrough. Whether or not you would want to replay it to unlock everything else, it really just depends on you, honestly. I personally won't. While I feel the gameplay was endearing, I also find it boring. You see, each chapter in the game has its own mission. The thing is though is that each mission is shared throughout each chapter, meaning one chapter you'll destroy enemies and others you'll be destroying buildings. It's literally the same thing over and over again. What I found to be odd is that one chapter I had to deliver pizzas to people while causing minimal damage to the city, and in the very next mission I had to destroy the same city. Like. What? What was the point of me not destroying anything if you were just gonna have me demolish it anyway? What's even worse about missions like these is that the buildings that the enemies destroy also counts against you as well. Seriously? Why? And now that I think about it, don't you think there should be some sort of penalty for destroying buildings? Think about it for a second. Ultra Pizza became heroes in this game after saving the world. I feel like it would make more sense to penalize the player for causing damage. I mean, sure, the NPCs encourage you not to destroy anything, but it doesn't matter if you do or not in most missions. There's also a challenge mode in each area which you use to mess around and just try to collect some extra cash. It certainly helps break the monotony, but not enough for me. Like I said, if the reward was better, then the repetitive gameplay wouldn't be that big of an issue. As far as the enemies go, all things considered, this game has a fantastic enemy variety. Each of them have special ways to take them out, which is something that I admire. Remember guys, this is an indie game. Each area brings in a new enemy for you to deal with in conjunction to the ones that you've met before. I don't particularly find the enemies too tough, but there is an annoying one. I don't know what it's called, but they hit hard, and they attract them to you with that stupid tractor beam. Otherwise, the enemies I thought were well designed and not too hard to deal with, while at the same time not being too easy. Your mech has a health bar, and it probably goes without saying that once it runs out, you die. If you have it maxed out, then you can use your mech's special abilities that you selected before you started the level. You can recharge your health at a recharge station or by picking up these energy canisters. In terms of difficulty, I think the game nailed difficulty progression perfectly, meaning that the game gets tougher as you go. 
The first few chapters of the game help you understand how everything works without directly holding your hand. Some of the missions tend to be a little tougher than others, but I doubt anybody will complain about the game being too hard or too easy. Aesthetically, this is the best part of the game for me. I love the art direction, I love the character design, I love the colors, the textures. Really, I love everything about the graphics here. I experienced only one glitch, but it was nothing game breaking. As far as the audio goes, it's okay. The main theme song was catchy at first, but this game suffers from what I like to call Secret Rings Syndrome. You know what I'm talking about, right? You ever play Sonic and the Secret Rings? You know how every time you enter the menu and you hear this song, Seven Rings in Hand? Well, it's just like that. You will hear the main theme every time you exit the stage. It's cool at first, but it gets annoying. Maybe have a little bit more variety in your next game, please. The music in the stages, I honestly don't have an opinion on. So all in all, the audio presentation is decent. Wow, this actually went on longer than I thought it would. Sorry about that. But in conclusion, this game is pretty average. The humor and the art design is charming, but my god, the monotony of the gameplay is tiring. Since I got the game for free, I can't really complain too much, but let's go ahead and take a look at how much it is on Steam. Holy crap, $18? I hate to break it to you, Breakfall, but this game is not worth 18 bucks. Even 15 would be pushing it. If you're watching, you may consider lowering your price to like $12. I think that's a fair price considering that this game only only takes a couple hours to beat, and there's real no incentive to 100% complete the game. All in all folks, Pizza Titan Ultra to me is just a pretty average experience. It's not bad, but it certainly isn't great either. So with all that in mind, I recommend you pick the game up if you're curious. It really is a good time killer. But seriously though, Breakfall, you need to lower that price. And that folks, is my honest opinion. But now, I want to know what you guys think. Does Pizza Titan Ultra look like a good game to you? Have you played it, and is it something that you could recommend to a friend? Please, leave all that and more down in the comments section below. I hope you guys will tune in for the next video, and until it comes out, you all have a great night, and take care. Hey folks, I want to thank you all so much for watching this video and supporting the channel. It really means a lot. If you guys are really curious, I do recommend you pick it up and take a look. It's really not a bad game. Just a few flaws, that's all. But anyway, I hope you guys look forward to the next video, and until it comes out, you guys have a great night and take care.